the rule of your life is going to be do what you're loving and love what you're doing. When you leave here tonight, go look at the ceiling and say to yourself, am I doing what I love? Do I love what I do? What if, she said, yes? What if it's the ghost of a child? Go on, he said. That hasn't been born yet. Are there such ghosts? And can they make sounds? My God, why do I say that? What a strange thing to say. The ghost of a baby that hasn't been born yet. Well, how can it have a voice, he said. Maybe it's not dead, but just wants to live, she said. Where did we meet? You know, it was the library. <laughs> I saw you prowling the stacks almost every day. I was there for about a week. You seemed to be looking for something. Maybe it wasn't a book. <laughs> well then, she said, maybe it was you after all. I saw you wandering the stacks, saw you studying the books. First thing you said to me was, how about Jane Austen? What a peculiar thing for a man to say. Most men don't read Jane Austen, or if they did, they wouldn't admit it or open a conversation with a line like that. That wasn't a line, he said. I thought you looked like a reader of Jane Austen, or maybe even <coughs> Edith Wharton. I thought it was quite natural. When I stopped to look in a window and glanced up, I saw that he had stopped 80 or 90 feet ahead of me and was looking back, watching me. As soon as he saw my glance, he walked away further up the street where he stopped again and looked back. After a few more of these silent exchanges, it came to me what was going on. Instead of following me from behind, <laughs> He was following me by leading the way and looking back to make sure that I came along. <laughs> the process continued for an entire city block and then finally, at last, I came to an intersection and found him waiting for me. He was tall and slender and blonde and quite handsome and seemed somehow to be French. <laughs> He looked athletic, perhaps a tennis player or a swimmer. I didn't know quite how to feel about the situation. Was I pleased? Was I flattered? Was I embarrassed? Suddenly, confronted with him, I stood at the intersection and said something in English and he shook his head. He said something in French and I shook my head. <laughs> then both of us laughed. No French, he said. I shook my head. No English, I said, and he shook his head. And again, we both laughed because here we were, past midnight, in Paris, <laughs> at an intersection, unable to talk to each other, not quite knowing what we were doing there. <laughs> Good Lord, I'm on Mars. <laughs> Anthony Smith said it. I'm not home. I'm not on Earth. I'm on Mars. I mean, where's Earth? There it is. I mean, see that damn small pinpoint of light? I mean, that, that's it. I mean, isn't it silly? I mean, what are we doing here? The men stiffened. The captain jerked his head at Walt and the psychiatrist. They went down the line quickly, trying to be casual. All right, Smith, what seems to be the trouble? What a be here! <laughs> Good God, why did I come? This isn't Earth! You took the exams, you knew what you'd be up against. No, I didn't! <laughs> I 
blocked it off. Tell people what you love. They can't resist you. You are here tonight because you love me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>